We are finally back. It's the first edition of Weather for Weather Geeks here in 2024. Hey everyone, it's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. I saved a lot of a vacation time for the end of the year, so uh, I've been mostly off over the last few weeks. You know me though, if you've been a long time follower of me on social media, you know I can't stay quiet for very long. So I've been posting occasionally and I even popped in to the studio and did a couple of our newscasts over the last couple of weeks. But for the most part, yeah, I've been away for uh, uh, quite a bit of time now since mid-December, but we're back at it here in the new year and we're all set to uh, head into a much more active, interesting weather pattern going forward. But before we get to the business of 2024, let's quickly quickly uh, review some of the top weather stories in our viewing area, Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, during 2023. Now I have top three on here. I could add a few more stories to this list, but the top three is kind of subjective, but let's talk about where I kind of place things. Uh, where's winter? Of course, last winter was very, very snow free and warm. This winter so far, including December of 2023, very warm, very, very snow free. It was the least snowy year on record and our warmest year locally since the 1930s. Uh, the valley in a haze. You remember, may remember the, all the uh, wildfire smoke and haze back in the summer, especially in June. We had raging wildfires in Canada. Canada. And not only did that produce some haze in the sky, this did cause some air quality issues across not only our viewing area, but a lot of the Great Lakes, the Northeast, and actually a good chunk of the Eastern United States. The number three story on my list, one tornado in the area in 2023 that was in Bristol Township in Trumbull County. It was an EF0 just after midnight. It was not on the ground for very long. It was an EF0, so it was the uh, lowest end tornado on the Fujita scale, but nonetheless, it was a tornado. Though I could also add to this list, uh, some of our high wind events back in the spring season, we had back-to-back -back high wind events on Saturdays, I believe, at the very end of March and the start of April. We had some uh, damage with uh, those. Uh, we could talk about the uh, dry weather that we had during parts of 2023, uh, long stretches of rain-free weather in May, in September, and November as well. The one in May was particularly odd. That's one of our more active months typically, but to May was a dry one in 2023. All right, yeah, I mentioned uh, the least uh, amount of snow in a calendar year. We had a paltry 18.9 inches of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport for the calendar year, January to December 2023. That just smashes the previous records from the 1930s and also in 1998. So yeah, it was just remarkably snow free in uh, 2023. And of course, temperatures were the uh, story. We had a few months that were a little on the cooler side, especially May and uh, June. But aside from being very close to average in August and November, we were by a fair margin above the average each month. And the months that really stand out, of course, the cold weather months of January, February, and December. Uh, January was 8.7 degrees above the average, 8.2 in February, and the number in December ended up being about 8.4 degrees above the average. All right, on this second day of 2024, yeah, it's that time of the year. Uh, we're going to have the stratocumulus clouds a lot at this time of the year. Uh, we saw a few breaks of sun trying to develop towards the late afternoon, but for the most part, the flavor of both today and yesterday, of course, uh, clouds to kick off the New Year. Temperatures did not move much as a result. We've had small diurnal ranges over the last couple of days. 30 this morning at the start of the day and 35 the best we can do. And 35 is right where we should be at this time of the year. But 30 is a warm overnight low. Of course, the blanket of clouds prevents temperatures from dropping a whole lot. So last night was fairly mild. Tonight, more of the same. We'll have a hard time dropping below 30 in most of the area. Incidentally, uh, with those snow showers very early on New Year's Day, we did pick up 0.3 inches of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport. All right, on the second day of January, we're actually at perihelion. Uh, this is the point in the Earth's orbit in which we reach our closest point to the sun. Now, Earth's orbit around the sun is more of an ellipse rather than a circle. And so there are times in our annual trip around our star um, that we are a little bit closer to the sun, sometimes a little bit farther away. And you know, it's a little counterintuitive, right? So we're close to the sun, but it's the dead of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Well, of course, the reason for the seasons is the tilt of the Earth relative to the Sun rather than our distance from the Sun. We're about three million miles in change closer to the Sun now than we are at the beginning of July. All right, in the here and now, uh, the weather across the country relatively benign for the time being. I mentioned we're going to have a more active pattern going forward. That's certainly going to uh, happen. The beginnings of that hitting the West Coast right now, pretty good area of low pressure, producing showers and mountain snow in California, parts of the uh, Northwest as well. Also some rain this evening 
in Texas. Now, our Wednesday will be kind of like today, just uneventful. A lot of clouds around, uh, not much more than a stray late-day flurry. Uh, we await this next cold front approaching from the north tomorrow night. Now, this front will produce a scattering of flurries and snow showers, especially after midnight tomorrow night into the wee hours of Thursday morning. Then the front sinks off to the south and uh, pretty quiet weather to wrap up the week Thursday and into Friday as high pressure builds in. Now, this won't be all the snow in the world with those snow showers tomorrow night, very early Thursday, but could it be enough to coat the ground? Maybe cause some slick surfaces for early morning commuters Thursday morning? I think that's possible, but actual accumulations should, should uh, generally be under an inch with that. But that's just a little bit of a teaser, of course, for the weekend. Let's talk about what's coming our way, uh, our way this weekend. This is our first legit snowstorm, quote-unquote, threat of the winter season, and really our first one in almost a year, to be honest, in most of our area. Now, that being said, it's not going to be the biggest snowstorm in the world. Uh, this storm track is a little bit too far to the south and east, and the storm is not quite amplified or strong enough to put us in the bullseye. I do think there'll be a pretty decent chance of five, six, seven inches plus in places like State College, PA, Altoona, Johnstown, Williamsport, PA, up towards Binghamton, New York, uh, north and west of New York City, north and west of Philadelphia. That's probably going to be the bullseye with this system with a cold rain along the big cities, DC, Washington, New York City. Yeah, there could be some snowflakes, but most of the impactful snow will be north and west of those big cities. And again, most of the heavy snow will be east of our viewing area. We're going to kind of get grazed by this, but I do think it'll be enough to be disruptive uh, for commuters, for travelers, during the second half of the day Saturday. <clears throat> now, this storm has been speeding up some on the modeling. It looked like more of a Saturday night into Sunday event previously. Now, with the last several runs of the modeling, it looks more like a Saturday afternoon into early Saturday night uh, event with the snow tapering off overnight. A few of our medium range computer models. Now, this is just the current runs. So the models, as you would expect, several days out have been waffling around a little bit. But here's what the current models are showing for our viewing area. The European is the uh, most kind of gung ho at this point, with maybe three inches or so advertised. The midday and afternoon runs of the GFS, including its ensemble, that's the blue line, uh, were not as uh, enthusiastic, if you will, about snow around here. So that's just kind of the current modeling. Now we look at a lot more than that and a lot more runs of models than that. And uh, as a result of what all we've looked at, we took kind of a first stab at putting some percentages on different outcomes with this weekend system. We think an inch is almost in the bag in most of our area. It would take a pretty significant storm track shift at this point to say we're going to get missed. Um, that seems very unlikely at this point. So an inch, very, very likely. Two inches, pretty likely. Once you get above that, it becomes a little more questionable. Uh, it becomes really a, a matter of the exact storm track uh, in, you know, 15 to 50 miles will make a, a big difference between something like this and something more like this. Um, so at this point, our odds decrease significantly once we get up into that four or five inch range. They're not zero. Uh, we can't rule that out at this point that this is a three, four, five inch uh, type of event. Um, but right now we think the most likely accumulation is maybe somewhere in this zone a couple or a few inches. So, you know, not all the snow in the world, but keep in mind, of course, we've had very little snow over the last year or two, to be honest, um, and so we're not quite used to uh, dealing with accumulating snow. And so, again, if you have to work Saturday afternoon into Saturday night, if you're going to be out and about for any other reason, don't take this too lightly. I mean, a couple or a few inches of snow, especially after sunset, uh, can be problematic on untreated surfaces. Now, once we get done with the weekend storm, the atmosphere will kind of reload. I mentioned this is an active weather pattern. And as we head into next week, what we have here are the is the atmospheric moisture and the isobars plotted up, the lines of equal pressure. And a pretty stout storm system is going to form across the middle of the country next week. And one run of this particular model, this is the European model, has a very stout area of low pressure. Uh, across the Ohio River Valley uh, in about a week, next Tuesday. Uh, now, this will probably be strong enough to draw in warm air and probably change things to rain for us for a lot of the day Tuesday. Now, it may switch over to snow showers as the storm departs next Tuesday night and Wednesday. Um, but odds favor the front end of the storm dragging in a lot of warm air and it turning rainy. This will probably be a pretty big wind producer for a lot of areas as well. Again, this is middle of next week. Active pattern, so no surprise, 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center today shows above average precipitation favored almost across the entire country. And, you know, 
Real quickly, a word on the winter forecast. Now that we're into the second month of meteorological winter, you may remember we put out our initial winter forecast in early November. And yeah, first part of winter, check. This was right. We called for a mild to a warm December. Mentioned at the top of the video, it was about eight degrees warmer than the average. But we do think these last two bullet points are still valid. We like overall our winter forecast at this point. We think January and February will be a much more active period. Now there's going to be some warm ups. There's going to be maybe five, six, seven day stretches where it's not that cold. But generally speaking, January and February should feature more cold snaps, more prolonged cold snaps than December and January and February of 2023, which as I showed you at the top of the video, were very, very mild. I don't think January or February will be eight degrees above the average in 2024. In fact, one or both of those months could end up being below average temperature wise. Will it be one for the record books? Will it be one you tell your grandkids about someday? Yeah, probably not. But it should be a very, very big change to the start of this winter and the same period last winter, which was remarkably warm and snow free. All right, we've babbled enough this evening. Long video this evening, but hey, we haven't talked in a while. We'll do Weather for Weather Geeks, same time, same place for the rest of this week. Thanks for your patience while I took some time off over the last few weeks. Hope you and yours had a great holiday season. I will see you back here on Wednesday.